we're going to talk specifically about intersex claims now. Intersex people are people who are born with variations of sex characteristics. They have many different types of bodies, different identities, and different experiences. Intersex people may be aware of this from birth, some may only find out later in life. This means that not everything in this video will apply to all intersex people. You need to consider what is relevant to your case, and do not worry if certain things do not apply to you. For example, some but not all intersex people may also identify as LGBT. If this applies to you, then you may also want to watch our videos on sexual orientation and gender identity claims. You will be able to raise your sexual orientation or gender identity, as well as being intersex in your asylum claim, if both are relevant to the reasons you had to leave your home country. It is important that throughout your case, you know that you are entitled to be treated with respect and to be referred to and addressed using the pronouns that you choose. When you are giving evidence to the Home Office, whether that is during your interview or in your statement, it is normal to go through your life and experiences in date order from when you were born. You'll also be expected to talk about your life in the country you fled. As a child and as an adult, your experiences in your country of origin and any problems that you may have experienced because you are in sex. We will now go through some questions to help you think about what needs to go into your statement. And this will also help you prepare for questions the Home Office might ask you during your interview. So perhaps a start in place might be when did you first become aware that you were intersex, born with the variations of sex characteristics, or that there was something different about you? What did you know about being intersex, if anything? If you don't know the word intersex or the phrase variations of sex characteristics, it's okay. Maybe you have heard medical diagnosis, or maybe you did hear the word hermaphrodite about yourself. It is also okay to let the Home Office know that the word intersex or variations of sex characteristics are not words that you grew up with. But you've got to know these words now you're in the UK. Tell them if it has changed your mindset and or mental health to have a better understanding of who you are. How did your parents treat you? Were any medical procedures performed on you, with or without your parents' consent? Do you know what these were and when they took place? These questions may be very upsetting for you to talk about, so you may want to try writing them down first and then giving them to your lawyer. They can then read through what you have written and think about further questions the Home Office may want to ask you. You can then go through those questions with your lawyer first so that you are more prepared for when you meet with the Home Office. Put dates of events wherever you can, but do not guess if you can't remember exactly. Just give an approximate date and explain that you cannot remember the exact date. Did you have any other problems in your country of origin? Because you're intersex, born with variations of sex characteristics? For example, if anyone was violent towards you, or if you have any other experiences of mistreatment, you will need to describe this in as much detail as you can. This does not apply to gender-based violence, such as rape, but you would still need to describe these events before and after. Other things to include in your statements are what gender identity were you raised as and why, for example, did a doctor make a decision about this when you were born? How did you feel about your assigned gender identity when growing up? It can also be possible that you are feeling okay with the gender you were assigned at birth, but you can't handle the medical procedures around it. Please explain it in detail. It can be hard and hurtful, but it's important for your interview. It is important to remember that there are no wrong or right answers. What is important is that you tell your own personal story. Was there a time when you started to express yourself in a different gender identity from the one that you were assigned by your parents or by medical professionals? Remember, that may not have happened to you, but there are no right or wrong answers. This is just you explaining what has happened to you in your life. When you're thinking about submitting evidence to back up your case, that can come from a variety of different sources. Witnesses can be particularly important, but there might not be any witnesses in your case who know enough or anything about you. This is not unusual and it's not something that you should worry about too much. If there are people in your life who you think may be willing and able to provide useful evidence, then you should ask them to support your case by writing letters or statements themselves. Those witnesses might be family members who are prepared to write and tell them about your life when you were growing up with them. There might be medical aspects to your case. For example, because you've had a medical intervention at some stage, including an intervention that wasn't your choice and was against your wishes. So there might be medical evidence that's relevant. 
you need to talk about your life in the UK now and the difference it has made to you to be able to live here in safety. If you need medical treatments now in the UK because of surgeries or other treatments that happen to you in the context of being an insect person, you also need to talk about this. Maybe you need medication like hydrocortisol or hormones because you don't have any hormone producing organs yourself anymore. You need to talk in your statement and in your interview about what would happen if you went back to your country of origin. This is really important because being a refugee and claiming asylum is about what will happen to you if you go back to your country of origin in the future. If you will not be at risk again in the future, then you will not succeed in your case. You need to explain what you think will happen when you go back and who you fear. Your fear may be of the government or the police in your own country, but it might be more specific. It might be that you have a problem with your family and that your family are not accepting because you're intersex. If the danger is from your family or from a smaller group like your village or community, then you will need to explain why you can't get help from the police. This may seem obvious to you because you may know that the police won't help you, but you will need to explain that to the Home Office so that they fully understand the reasons you cannot get help in your country of origin. You only get asylum in a country like the United Kingdom if you can't be safe anywhere in your own country. So if the problem is from your government, that might extend across the whole of your country. But if it's just from your family or in your village, then you need to explain why you couldn't be safe by moving away from them to another part of the country. These are the main issues that you'll need to explain in your statement.